What's happening, people? United Central here back with another video. This is a match preview, as you can see. Friday night, we always give you the preview. And yeah, man, it's a big, big fixture, man. You know what I mean? Back in the day, this used to be a title race. You know what I mean? Back in the old days of um, 96, you know what I mean? Was, that, was it 96, wasn't it? Well, um, 96, uh... 95, 96, when... You know, what was that famous Keegan words? Um, I would love yeah. it if we beat them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely brilliant, brilliant. But yeah, man, I always, you know what is it? I like Newcastle, you know, it's a big, big, you know, club. You know, I know we have our banter in terms of Sherry sent you down and, you know, um, what's that other song called again, Adam? Um, what's that other song called? Uh, I know, it's, it's the banter from to and fro from the fans, yeah. like the camaraderie, because the Shearer's, Finger on, so it's down, like yeah. he, he turned you down, and then mm -hmm. we shout back, he sent you down. So it's just <laughs> yeah. like a it's like the touring and throwing, but it's the uh, it's the uh, what's the name? Uh, sad, uh, you know what, you know what, uh, and that uh, homecoming queen. What's the song? How's it going? I can't remember the actual yeah title of the song, but yeah, that's the uh, that's the uh, the ob the obligatory version type song anyway, but. Yeah, it's uh, what's the name? I, I just it's like you said, then say, mate, just walking through Newcastle, it's like football bleeds, yeah, it's just everywhere. That's uh, it's the best, it's the best position football stadium in the world, right outside the town center. It, it's it's brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant. yeah it is. Big up Newcastle, man. It's a shame but, we uh, get stuck up in the Evans, though, in the top of the stand. <laughs> I know, that's, yeah, that's, that's about it. Them steps, mate. We've yeah, been discussing for the past five years or so bringing you down a level, but it, it still hasn't happened yet. I don't know if it ever will. I wish we'd yeah. do that. <laughs> Absolutely, man. But yeah, man, um, pleasure to have you on. Kege, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, sweet, mate. Thank you very much for having me on. All good? Yeah, man, all good, man. You know what I mean? We're going to get a preview in a big fixture uh, against Newcastle. Uh, Statman, how are you doing, mate, after Nagelsmann? You know, he did, did, right, did let's, not talk, let's not talk about that yet. <laughs> Oli yesterday did this thing 4 0. We're basically through. Yeah, we're basically through, man. You know what I mean? Good good result yesterday. Adam, man, a couple of goals in there yesterday, full of confidence. Should be beating Newcastle with ease now. <laughs> uh, mate, well, that's it. Uh, if yesterday, a team uh, made that suicidal uh, tactical move of actually playing a high line against United. It, <laughs> Just don't do that and you'll be all right. It's as simple as that. If you play a high line against us, we will just tear you apart. Even Pep Guardiola's realised that. So if Pep's done it, then I, 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 like you said at the start, I think if Steve Bruce plays his cards right, he knows what tactic to play tomorrow. Mm. Or Sunday Absolutely. even. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I here saying it seems Ricky doesn't want to, doesn't want Bruno. We will give you Xhaka and 90 million for him. Wow. You know mm. what I mean? Ricky, Ricky doesn't hey, want a lot uh, of players at the minute. Uh, Zane came on mine last night. Uh, Zane, while well, you're there watching, mate, what happened to uh, Abba last night, mate? Was it? Yeah. Quite a few glaring misses, mate. <laughs> yeah, is it Abba where? Abba nowhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, big, big, um, big, big fit shot in terms of rivalry. But I want to go to you, uh, uh, Keg, mate. Um, Lucas on this season, how's it been for you? Um, I know Bruce there's not been a lot of I listen I, I listen to Kendall's tweets every every day, man. She doesn't <laughs> like it's almost as if I, I need to go to Kendall's tweets here to find out what's happening <laughs> at Newcastle, man. Yeah, she knows it. She knows the score, Kendall. Yeah, man, big up Kendall, but you know, you know, what's going on this season? You know, I mean, you've had a bad start to the season. Um, you know, actually you didn't have a bad start. You beat New beat West Ham, didn't you? Away from West Ham home. first game of the season, two 0 yeah. That, that that was good. Yeah. It's just pff, been I want to say it's been up and down, but it's mostly been down. It hasn't been that good. Like, yeah, we started off decent first game of the season, good yeah. win away. West At the start of the season, like, I tipped West Ham to go down. I thought they would have a bad season and they yeah. started the season badly. But as it's come now, where are they now? About fifth. So looking back on yeah. it, that's actually, yeah. that was actually a really good result. Uh, mm. Yeah, Newcastle, it's just pretty much gone from, it's been gone bad to worse. Like, we've never liked Steve Bruce since minute one last season. It yeah. was poor as a whole, but we finished 13th. We got some decent results. Beat you at home, beat Chelsea yeah. at home, drew with City at yeah. home, beat Tottenham away. So it wasn't all doom and gloom, but and coming into this season, made some decent signings like Callum Wilson, uh, Ryan Fraser, Jamal Lewis. So... Yeah. We were actually excited for once, like where the signings were made, like actually signing players that were needed instead of just random players in random positions like we're always used to. We built up a squad that we're actually happy with, but 
Steve Bruce, he just doesn't know how to get the best out of his players anymore. People big him up as a good man manager. Basically, what he'll do is give you a pat on the back. That's about it. He'll give you a Brucey bear hug, <laughs> tell you everything's going to be okay, order you oh, a takeaway for full time. That's about it. Like, he's got mm. no, he openly admits to not believing in tactics. Like, bro, it's well, he's 20, got someone in now. He's got 20, someone in yeah. now, hasn't he? So, the last few games since then, like about December through January, was appalling. We had about 11 games, didn't win one of them, scored about five goals. Yeah. It was shocking. And we brought in Graham Jones, which at the time we weren't really happy about. Like we've already got a long line of co-managers. We didn't need Bournemouth's co-manager to go alongside them, but he's actually been a difference. We've seen a huge difference in him. You can see in the training ground, he's got like his pen and paper out and just having the, the guys around him showing them tactics, which sounds like a normal thing to do, right? That's what coaches do, that's their job. Not at Newcastle. We haven't seen that before with any of the Steves. Steve Bruce, Steve Agnew, Steve Harper, Steve Clements. I don't know what they do on the training ground, but Graham Jones has come in. And even on the sideline, you can see him. He's on the edge of the technical area while the other Steves have got their hands in their pockets. He's out dishing the orders, pointing, shouting, doing what he's meant to do. So since he's came in, we've had four games with Graham Jones in. Won two, lost two. Even the Crystal Palace defeat was actually probably as well as we've played all season. Looking back on that, thinking how we didn't get a point out, well, that's actually amazing. But the, the Chelsea game, that's the issue against big teams, especially away. Steve Bruce hasn't got a clue what to do. Like Chelsea at the weekend, awful. And I'm not looking forward to playing at Old Trafford. We haven't won there since 2015. We hadn't won at Stamford Bridge in nine years. We haven't won at the Emirates in 11 years. They we just haven't got a good record against the big six teams away, unfortunately. But you know, records are there to be broken, stat man. You know, you're the <laughs> stat man now. You're, Listen, you know what I mean? Um, you know what's mad? It's Keck was on, describing sir. the Newcastle coach today, and for me, he just sounds like United's coaches. We're clueless together, <laughs> and that's the problem. <laughs> I'm pleased we're not Newcastle alone in coach. this. At least we've got each other. Yeah, seriously. How Newcastle <laughs> coaches at the same level as Manchester United's coaches. Like, it baffles me. <laughs> but are you worried about um, in terms of the low block uh, Newcastle I don't know you know Newcastle have had um, thinking but against the low block you know what I mean um, that Newcastle do have you know what I mean you know we can't afford to drop points can we start man you know what I mean? it's going to be a tough on. tough battle and West Brom you know what I mean they they were bottom of the league Newcastle not bottom of the league though are they you know they're still in around you know I think they're a few points ahead of the you know in terms of but like, you know United have, have you got anything to be worried about Newcastle in terms of the low of, course. Block. of course, we couldn't <laughs> beat West Brom last week. We couldn't beat Sheffield United. We know when we play teams that play a low block, we struggle. We say that no system thing every single week. We're going to struggle <coughs> against Newcastle. And the thing is, yeah, without Pogba, Bruno is our only creativity. And we know if Bruno has an off game, where's that creativity coming from? Because if McTominay's fit, it's going to be McTominay and Fred behind him. Donny van der Beek looks like he's injured. I think Cavani still yep. went out for the game. So there's going to be yeah. a lack of movement up front compared to someone like Martial, for example. Rashford, you could argue, hasn't been on the best of all. Mason has done decent, to be fair. And then our next best creativity option is uh, Luke Shaw. That's the yeah. problem straight away. We don't have creativity in our side. And we don't have a system that creates chances for ourselves, kind of thing. Mm. Adam, you know what I mean? It's going to be a tough one, this one. Newcastle, I know, you know, Keg's, you know, playing them down a little bit, but you never know, man, with this. <laughs> Sheffield United, they came round here, they, they played a low block and they somehow managed to get a result, you know. I know, I think Newcastle got better players than Sheffield United, but you just don't know, with it? Like, you know, <laughs> Man United, you don't know what you're getting, man. We beat 4-0 yesterday, but it's almost like it's like a new game every single game, Man United, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, this is what, I mean. uh, Statman touched on it there in terms of worrying, but look at that bottom five right now. I think it's Newcastle, I think it's Newcastle there, then it's Fulham, West Brom, Sheffield United, look at them games against us this season. Newcastle away, early on the season, conceded an early goal. Sheffield United, early goal. West Brom, early goal. Couldn't beat Sheffield United at home. No. Struggled to beat West Bromwich Albion at home, but for a VAR penalty. You know what I mean? Fulham away from home, conceded an early goal. United switch off, and then we have to deal with the low block. It's not like we are fighting the low block at a nil-nil status. We have to fight our way back from being behind, from being asleep, to then 
deal with a low block. It's like we just had there's an arrogance about us when we play the smaller teams. No disrespect mm. to Newcastle, they're not small on that, but in terms of the league league table at the moment, relegation battling teams, we just think we can turn up and roll them over. Yeah. And then it yeah. takes that team to score a goal for us to actually wake up and start playing football. It's ridiculous, mm. but there is not one team in this league that I think is an easy game. I really don't. I mean, yep. West Brom took points off us, City and Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's an absolutely crazy season. Absolutely mental. But you've got to look at it and go, and I touched on it before, Pep Guardiola swallowed his pride, changed his tactics against United. Best attacking team in the league. Starts playing a low block against United. Lo and behold, we haven't got a clue. It's not difficult. It really isn't difficult. Unless United do go in front, then we are going to struggle. And who have Newcastle got? I mean, I don't know if the maximum is totally fit. If he is, then I worry. Uh, Definitely for our defence. And Callum Wilson, massive miss for Newcastle. That's what sort of holding me up is to say, I think we'll have enough to beat Newcastle. If we score the first goal, I think we're in. We're done. But if we don't, and we don't score in the first half an hour, hard game ahead. Mm. Uh, just that one there. Uh, do you remember the night six? Well, I don't remember. I was only about three, two years mate, old, three years old. I can still, mate, I can still hear that uh, Martin Tyler, Philippe Albert. <laughs> oh, that's all I can hear. Like, oh, <laughs> it's get funny though. Say that again. <laughs> Philippe Albert. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's, God, my, that's my alarm that's clock. The old <laughs> that shit. I just went, I was sat there like I went, Oh, God, that's a good goal. <laughs> that's all I could say. I was like, Schmeichel lobbed. It was like, wow. If you can watch Schmeichel from from 20 yards plus, then you deserve the praise. But yeah, we won the league that season, those eight mates. So yeah, big up yourself, mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, does that give you hope, though, Keck? You know what I mean? Sheffield United result, Crystal Palace at the start, you know, the, the West Brom game. Does that give you any glimmer of hope? But is it just um, that Steve Bruce is a Steve Bruce? And it doesn't go with the flow. Yeah, it, it doesn't. Like, say, like, before big teams, especially away, it, it might as well just come out waving a big white flag. Like, <laughs> we, we've been the same as though. Like, we gave Sheffield United their first win of the season a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so w- we were the first ones to take that L against Sheffield United. So, you know, like, we always do it the hard way in Newcastle. Like, the last couple of months, just, it, it hasn't been pretty. Like, coming up against... Uh, Man United. I think you're right. Like, I think we could go at you and get that first goal. We're having the last two games at Old Trafford. Last season, yeah. Matty, Matty Longstaff on Boxing Day. Oh. Season before, we were 2-0 up at half-time. Oh, went, I remember that went, game. I remember that yeah. game. That was probably the best game mate, in a while. It went, it went off, mate, didn't it? Outside <laughs> after that <laughs> game. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, we went 1-0 up at St. James's earlier this season as well, so... I think we should just try and get at you quick, get that early goal. But the problem with Steve Bruce is he tries to hold off. And you see what happened in each of those games. Yeah, we went 1-0 up, but we lost. We lost 3-2 after being 2-0 up at half-time. We lost 4-1 on Boxing Day. We lost 4-1 earlier this season at St. James's. So I I don't know what the best thing to do is because since uh, Graham Jones has came in, we've been playing a little bit more attacking We've changed from Bruce's negative five at the back formation to a 4-3-3, which was really, really working against the likes of Everton, Palace and Southampton. We tried to do that at Stamford Bridge last week, but it just didn't work. It's like they were scared to go forwards. Like they just didn't really seem to know what to do in this formation. We seemed to just kind of just stay at the back. Isaac Hayden was like dropping into the defense to try and like like create that low block. But they still managed to get through. Two sloppy goals. They went great goals to concede. But, yeah. you know, against Man United, it depends who you have available. Like, I know Pogba and yeah. Cavani might be out. But as long as if you've got Bruno Fernandes, mm. you're in with a chance. Like, look what happened at St. James's earlier this season. It was 1-1 on, what, 87 minutes? Like, we held you off for so, so long. It looked like, I think even just before you scored their second, we missed yeah. a chance to go 2-1 up. But yeah. it's just that it's just that little difference. Like I think you just have that extra quality that we don't have, especially in attacking, especially without Callum Wilson. You're gonna be dangerous, and 
I know you're, you're worried about like Steve Bruce's defensive approach with the low block and stuff, but mm. if you just do what Chelsea did and attack, we're there for the take, and you've got the quality in, in your attacking line, even if uh, Martial's not firing, Rashford's not firing, you've still got the personnel. As long as you've got Bruno Fernandes, he's uh, like yeah, the 12th well. man at the minute, you know what I mean? Like, as long as you've got Absolutely. Fernandes, you've definitely got a chance to break us down. Uh. Hopefully, long staff, you know what I mean? Hopefully, they don't turn up, mate, because every time, <laughs> you know, he turns up against Man United, I don't know what it is, mate. You know, them, them two there, mate. He uh, gonna come up to, yeah, exactly. Gonna come up to you, Statman. You know, what's the kind of game plan now for this, you know, with this game? Because, you know, do we overload the midfield? Do we, you know, try and go at them from the start? You know, what is, because Oli, you know, I mean, in terms of the West Brom game, you know, I don't know what it was here, but it was just, for me, no structure to the play, wasn't it? Like, what what, what we, should we do we, against Listen, we know what Oli's going to do. He never changes it. He's going to be a 4 2 3 1. If Tom used to say it's going to be Tommy and Fred in the double pivot. It's as simple as that. What will be interesting, and I've seen a lot of people in the comments say, is Wamma, please. Wamma on the right is going to help us against a low block because Wamma can find those little spaces, can find those little cute passes. I would actually, I wouldn't mind seeing Wamma play. I know he's been out for a couple weeks with the mm. personal stuff, but I wouldn't yeah. mind Wamma in there. And the thing is, that, let's be honest, as much, no disrespect to Newcastle here. Yeah? I'm not scared of Newcastle. They, I think Leeds, United and West Brom are the only teams to concede them more than you guys. I think, oh, is it? I think, yeah, I think Callum Wilson's their top scorer with 10 goals in the Premier League. They, yeah, I think they've right. only got two other players with more than one goal. Yeah. <laughs> and and the one's Jeff Hendrick. Exactly. I think the only little <laughs> issue that I have is, say, Maximum. We know Lindelof's going to play. We know that for a fact. Same if Wambasaka pushes on forward and same maximum gets that space, there's trouble because Lindelof and Maguire cannot cover, and we know Eric Bailly is not going to play. And that's why I think Oli, even if like McTomney, if Donny Van der Beek is fit, McTomney would definitely start just for the, just to break up the counter, just to break up that yeah. transition. McTomney will be in there, which kind of makes sense. Mm. And it's going to be a massive game for Fred as well. Fred needs to shuffle across, break that. You just can't let say maximum. Mm. Travel with the ball. That's the problem. There's a there's a game there's a there's a game plan right there. If Bruce had anything to counteract Man United, it would be Andy Carroll feeds the maximum off Andy Carroll. Play the long ball all game because the long ball destroys our football team. It kills our defense every single time. And that, that there's there's your tactic right there. It's simple and effective football, but. He probably won't do it, Brucey. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> <laughs> if I was if I was Newcastle, that's how I'd be setting out, knowing what United are like. Weak in the air at the back, slow at the back, perfect combination right there. But I will see. If Eric Bay plays, it's a different team for United, it really is. But Statman nailed it. We say that every he week. ain't playing. <laughs> he ain't playing. Mm, and that's are you frustrated? Are you worried then, uh, Adam, in terms of the low block? Um, you know what I mean? In terms of what we're going to get, you know what I mean? Is it going to be a case of, you know what I mean? Everyone's slow passing, you know what I mean? Like, because I know we, we did go on Thursday, but that Thursday, Sunday kind of feeling, you know what I mean? That, you know, it's easy. West Ham have had a Sunday fresh night. week. Sunday night, well, Sunday mate, that's, night, that's, yeah. that's a hard Sunday one. Sunday night to, to get, to sort of to get slow, motivated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah motivated. I mean, the fact that every single team around us is going to have played before us, heaps pressure yeah. on us and we are crap under pressure. So it is, it's going to be hard and where the players' heads are at, I do not know. In terms of tactics, it just has to be quick, risky football. Safe style football and keeping hold of the ball is not going to work in this game. We're going to have to take risks. We're going to have to play some percentage football, pick up on the seconds, play the odd long ball, just try and mix it up instead of playing in front of Newcastle. Because if we do that, then we know any team can hold out against us. That man's talking about the worst defences in the league there. Well, couple of them have already held us out this season. So yeah. we know it doesn't matter who and what record these teams have got in defence through the season. They can hold out against United because we play in front of them. We just don't take the risks. Until Bruno gets hold of the ball, we ain't seeing anything going on. Uh, and like Statman said again, with Rashford, Martial sort of out of form, then you're relying on Bruno. If Newcastle can nullify Bruno, then... The game changes completely because then we start panicking, forcing play, and that's when we start giving the ball away all the time as well. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, Mata, he could be a shout. He really could. But I do think that Greenwood should start this game because of the way he's looking after the ball at the moment. He's been our best of the front three in terms of uh, looking after the ball and using it right. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It all, 
the longer it goes on and we don't score, then the more nervous we all get. I think if it starts off like a steam train and everything happens in them first few minutes, then different game altogether. But, I mean, I've been at Old Trafford when United drew 0-0 with Newcastle under Fergie. Do you know what I mean? Anything's possible. Yeah, yeah that's true. What, what what what's the game plan for Newcastle in terms of what are you good at? I know I know Steve Bruce is um, you know I mean a lot of people say he's not the best football, but what what as a, as a fan as obviously you 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 back your players and whatnot? What do you think you can where you can hurt Man United? I know you don't want to give too many away, but <laughs> where can you hurt Man United? You reckon? Where can Newcastle do? I, I think you're right. Maybe it's just using the pace of Sir Maximin and uh, Miguel Almiron. Like that was the way we should have gone against the uh, against Chelsea. Like their centre backs are slow, like Christiansen, Rudiger, Aspilaqueta. Yeah. Like they're they're not great defenders, and they're certainly not quick defenders. But Bruce just kind of bottled that game, and it, even though we set out the right way with the four three three, we just didn't use them as much as we could. And Sir Maximin, like as much as we love him, sometimes his decision making just isn't right. He can he can run at you mm. all day long. He can use his pace, that energy, run at defenders, but that's what he does, he runs at defenders, like into them. Like he doesn't really know well, whether he got, wants to. That does that. <laughs> yeah, he, he yeah, doesn't know on. whether he wants to cut in, get the shot away, go on the left, and get the cross in. Certainly, his decision making is just a little bit too slow. We need him to be a little bit sharper in the mind. And the players in the box without Callum Wilson, we've got shorter guys. I know everyone, like every preview I do with other fans, everyone always worries about Andy Carroll. But he doesn't play much. Like he's he's a mm-hmm. bench warmer basically. He comes on for the last 10, 15 minutes if we need a reaction, if we need to play mm-hmm. the pump it up long form style to just to get an equalizer or something like that. Like he doesn't really get that much game time. He, he very rarely starts. He did the first couple of games of the season. Since then he's probably only started. Maybe he's another two games after that. So he's not a consistent player. He doesn't get loads of minutes. So I wouldn't worry too much about him starting, to be honest. Like you say, well, you like, you're, you're, you're not great in the air. Like, I you don't see think Andy, Carroll, start. Andy Carroll, is he on a, like, a pay as a, a pay as yeah. a pay contract? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I kind wow. of see why he doesn't play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he's, he's just too injury prone. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem with Andy Carroll. Like, he's, he's on the wrong side of 30. The last 10 years has been awful with injuries. Like The only thing he's really good at is being that aerial threat. But I, I feel like referees are on to him now. Like if you've seen the last 10, 15 minutes against Chelsea last week, the ball just needs to pump up to be Andy Carroll and it's a free kick. He doesn't need to yeah. go anywhere near you. Like the referees are just like that. Like ball's gone, Andy Carroll, anywhere near his head, it's a free kick. He doesn't need to touch anybody. I feel like the kind of player Andy Carroll is now because the game has gone a little bit soft with like refereeing calls Players like Andy Carroll are almost redundant in football now. Like, like he's just fucking pointless. Like, you, you can't even you can't even challenge people in the air because the referees are just like free kick. So, mm. yeah, I wouldn't really worry, worry about too much again about Andy Carroll. It is Sir Maximin's pace, but Sir Maximin needs to be sharper in his decision making. Mm. That's massive, man. And obviously, you know what I mean. With our defense, um, if it's Lindelof Maguire stat, man, it's gonna be a Tricky one, man. The wingers, armor on and what I understand, you know. What I mean, we have the quality to still be compact and whatnot, but you know, that if that that pace in behind if Bayer's not playing will be costly, man. And Ollie, will he will he forget about this? Will he, you know, we had a, a Sadio Mane's look like you know, did the figure against those and whatnot, and he you know, he did us he did us bits, man. So it, it could be another way. Andy Carroll, if he Andy Carroll comes in and starts bullying our defense, you never know, do you? You never know, man. Listen, we never know what United is going to turn up anyway. From our coaching staff to the players. And the thing is, you were saying something about St. Max, but maybe like, he doesn't have the highest IQ. Lindelof is a passive defender. He will give you the most time in the world. Like, I'm mm. telling you, he won't even try to put a foot in for a tackle. He will literally just back up, back up, back up. So St. Max will have all the time in the world to actually choose what he wants to do, whether it's a pass do and, a, and another attack or just take him on. It's like That's, that's United's defence right now. Where mm. I think... Other than Leeds, we got one of the worst records in the top 10 or something, defensively. We have. We're shocking we have. defensively. We, we, were, we were happy when Leeds broke into the top 10 because it took our worst defensive record off us in the top uh, 10. Yeah. That's, <laughs> exactly. what, that's what we were saying. We were, bet we got uh, best attack in the league, worst defence in the top 10. So there's everything you need to know about us because like mm. Statman said, we don't know what's going to turn up, mate. Could be anything. Yeah. 
Good goal well, from the boredom of West Brom. Yeah. The three-three against Everton, the nine-nil against Southampton, to losing two-one at home to Sheffield United. It is you just ain't got a clue. Yeah. And I think most other managers don't know either, and that's why we're probably second because we yeah. ain't got a clue how to read us. <laughs> you just don't know. No. And that's the thing, you know, and I think we've got a question there for you um, from Anna. Thoughts on Willard, Keck? Is he your only hope? Been, it's been, is that a good start, hasn't it? He's had a good start. I, I don't know, only hope. I, I think that's a little bit over the top a bit. But yeah, he's been great. Like when he first came in, we didn't really know if it was the kind of signing that we needed. Like we yeah. we're desperate for a left back. We've only got one notable left back in the squad. So that's what yeah. we really want is maybe another striker. Uh, we needed like an attacking midfielder like a, a proper number eight who can pick the ball up drive at a defense link up with the strikers we've needed that for about two years but I, I didn't really know too much about joe willock so it seemed like a bit of a disappointing signing uh last season we got nabil bentaleb who was hopeless that was a shocking signing. oh yeah but uh now so Class far yeah <laughs> oh, absolutely yeah willock's played the last uh two games and he's been great, absolute fantastic debut against Southampton. And he really is that number eight that we did need all along. Like, I didn't see it at first, but now I do. Yeah, I'm really happy with Willock. Hopefully, we can keep him for a little bit longer in, into next season, hopefully, because he's still a young lad. He's still got a lot to learn as well. But yeah, he is the kind of player that we did desperately need that I, I didn't see uh, originally. Well, how do you think he played mm. against Chelsea? Because when I watched the Chelsea game, I thought you were right inside, kind of struggled mm -hmm. with the. Uh... Areas that Timo Werner and stuff were picking up. And Newcastle as a whole, or Willock? Just that down that right inside because Willock. Oh right yeah, right. yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, like like like, like Werner pretty much had us on toast. Even on the other side, uh, mm. Hudson and on the on the right hand side, like our fullbacks mm. had a bad game that game. Mm. Like yeah, like even game, even Werner who's been hopeless looked look really good that game. Because mm. the thing is, is that like, your when I watched your right inside, I was like. This is an area where United can actually exploit because our left hand yeah. side is decent, whether it's Rashford or Marshall, whoever plays there, and Luke Shaw at left back. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an area we could actually target. Yeah. yeah. So we've got Absolutely. Emil Kraft. He's our only available one at the minute. A couple of months ago, when we were playing five at the back, where we were playing with wing backs, while Jacob Murphy, who converted there earlier this season, who's actually been pretty decent there, we had DeAndre Yedlin, who's just gone off to Turkey, and Javier Manquillo's out for the next eight weeks. So we've gone from having four options on the right-hand side to only one. Emil Kraft, he, he divides opinion among the Newcastle fan base. It's mostly negative. Most people hate mm -hmm. seeing Emil Kraft in the starting lineup, along with Joe Linton and Jeff Hendrick. They're the scapegoats pretty much as soon mm -hmm. as the starting lineup comes out. If any of them three is in the starting lineup, it's all guns blazing. Fans are kicking mm -hmm. off. Why in? Why in? But for me, yeah. Kraft does okay. You know, like he's not going to set the world alight. He was like a four or five million pound signing from a relegation uh, French team. Like, you know, he's not he's not going to be like the next Juan Bissaka or, or Reese James mm. or whoever. Like, he does a decent job, but coming up against guys like you with a bit of thought, uh, with a bit like attacking intent, like a team of mm. uh, I think when you beat us 4 1 at St. James's, he had a decent game up until the last 10 minutes, then the gas just ran out. Like, Rashford yeah. and Bruno like absolutely wiped the floor with him at the end of it. So yeah, he's inconsistent. He's a decent fullback as a wing back. He's hopeless, but yeah, he's I don't know. You know, like you say, he's one of them. He's four, four, four or five million pounds. You're not going to get a great player from that in this modern market. So he is what he is. But as soon as we can get Mankio back or another option to to cover him or challenge him, the better. Mm. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Make sure, guys, smash the like on the video, people, and uh, let's share that button as well. Um, Adam, we can't afford to drop any points, man. This top four race is hotted up now. West Ham, I think West Ham have got a big chance of winning Tottenham, you know. Um, Liverpool should be back in there soon. If they beat Liverpool, they'll be at what three points behind us. So, well, not even that, probably is it? Yeah, probably three points behind us. So, yeah, and Leicester yeah. in there as well. Mm. So, it's a big top four race, this, you know. Luke, drop any points here, mate. And they got Chelsea and City back to back. You know, barring, barring Liverpool's season, mate, this season has got massive similarities to last season yeah. in terms of the teams that are up there. The title gone, everyone fighting for two or three spaces in the top four. That's pretty much exactly how it's going right now. The fact that we've got Newcastle at home this weekend, then Chelsea and City back to back after it makes this game vital for us. It just gives us that little bit of 
like an insurance mm-hmm. chip just going into them big games because mm-hmm. Chelsea could literally be on our tails. City, no one's beating them at the moment. We'll be lucky to get a draw out of that yeah, one. And I think true. they'll take a draw right now. So even then, teams behind us are going to be looking at that game going, United playing City, there's a chance. Let's see how they do in the next West Ham after that as well. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I, I everyone's going to take points off everyone, right? And the fact that the point gap is so close between second and, God no, goes down to about ninth or something like that, doesn't it? The fact that all them teams are in it together and a lot of them are playing each other. I mean, what is it? Arsenal playing City this weekend. It's the Merseyside derby. Uh, do you know what I mean? There's, there's so many games, West Ham, Tottenham, it's all knocking points off each other. We should have been clear. We should have beaten West Brom. We should have beaten Sheffield United. And we wouldn't have even been having this conversation, mate. Simple mistakes against crap teams brings up this conversation. It is going to be tight towards the end now, mate, I think. It's top four fight. I think we could end up coming out of the top four, going back mm. in it again. And I think it's just going to end up being exactly the same as it was last season with the same teams because... Leicester look dangerous, then they look crap, then they look dangerous again. It's pretty much like everyone. No one's getting a run apart from mm. City, and that's why they've just steamrolled out of the way. Uh, we just need to put three or four wins together, and I think that Can will be... Can I mean, this is it. In the next few games, you can't see it, mate, because of who we're playing. But wow. you'd have thought that against West Brom, Sheffield United to the world, but we didn't then either. There you go. But this is anyone else going to be able... Is anyone else going to be able to do it? That's why I'm confident we're going to get top four, mate, because everyone else is as con- inconsistent as we are. And I think on the end, in the end, we'll just have a bit more and we will get we will get top four. <sighs> Who else is going to be in there? Mate, probably the one time I couldn't even answer that question. I have no idea right now who's getting that top four. And I think we'll scrape it, but anyone else, I, I honestly ain't got a clue, mate. It could be anyone. Mm. What do you make yeah, of uh, my United confident. keg? Yeah, I'm not. Uh, what do you make of my United keg uh, this season? Or what have you made as a manager or just in general? Obviously, we've got star quality in Bruno and uh, Rashford, but what have you made of my United as a whole in consistent season? The uh, lack of, uh, you know, can't break down teams who like Sheffield United and whatnot, um, teams. Yeah, that it's just a fair reflection of the season as a whole in the Premier League. Just everybody's been inconsistent. Like 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 to uh, Leicester that you just mentioned, like even early in the season, like Man City, who's now wheeling away with the title, they were poor. Liverpool's been poor. It's just been a, a mad one for Man United. Mm. I'm not really sure. Like, I know like, we, we spoke earlier in the season. I, do, I know a lot of uh, uh, Man United fans aren't happy with Oli, similar to we're not happy with Bruce. I just don't mm. really know if Oli's got the longevity. I think it's like a bit of a fairy tale story with him being like, the the ex legends mm. like scored so many goals, Champions League goals and stuff. But I just don't think he's he's the right guy. I, I just don't think you've. Uh, what makes like, you say that? What makes you what's what is it that you think that doesn't make you the right guy? It's like lack of experience for one, but just mm. the way he's been in the last two years. Like when he first came in, I, I actually thought he was going to be the game changer because you were putting people out the way four five nil in like his first like four or five games. But I was yeah. thinking, wow, he he could actually be the guy to to fill Fergie's massive, massive shoes because no one else has been able to do that. But like, just after, was it the the PSG comeback? Like it just kind of fell off there, wasn't it? The wheels fell mm. off, as they say. And uh, I don't know. I think it's just been that consistency since then. It's just been up and down. You've had a few wins where you think, oh, they're back. When you brought Bruno in, they're back. Mm. They're going to be back up there. They're going to be challenging. But then you lose to the likes of Sheffield United and you beat Southampton 9-0. It's like, what the fuck's going on here? It's just, you just can't keep up with you my tell United. Us, Keg. You tell us, <laughs> no, mate. Like, you you just can't keep up man. with We're my United. It's, yeah, it, it's, it's a weird one. I think you've still got, I think you're building the foundations to get back to where you once were. Maybe he's not to that high level, but with the likes of uh, Bruno, I think he was the guy. I think he was the missing piece of the puzzle that you've needed for a long time, mm. but there's still pieces mainly the defence. I don't know if uh, De Gea is really going to be for the long term, but I don't think Oli is either. So there's still a lot of work to be done. It's a, it's a work in progress at Man United. It has been since Fergie left, and it probably still will be for another two or three years at least. Two or three years, Adam, mate. This is it, man. You know what I mean? Can, you know, the contract's looming now, you know what I mean? Um, 
Ollie, can he get that consistency again? Oh, is, it's going to be a tough it, couple mate. of weeks, you know, this, you know. It's going to be a tough it couple is, of weeks. It is, mate. We say, we say the word pivotal. We say defining moments nearly every single week, mate. We've got an excuse to use them phrases because it just feels yeah. like that, doesn't it? Uh, we're not getting any knee-jerk reactions from the board or the United hierarchy yeah. at the moment with Ollie. I think we, uh, it is all going to come down to how this season finishes. I think he will get that contract extension if he makes top four. I really do, but I just, it's like you said, it's, there is, and the question comes out, doesn't it? It's like, has Oli already reached his max potential in terms of where he can take this team? That's the question on a lot of United fans' lips. And is he going to be able to bridge the gap to Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp? That's the big one, isn't it? Because he took us this far, which we all said, you know, what's decent, finish third, if we can improve on that next season, get a bit closer to City and Liverpool, that's great. Then what? Everyone's going to be expecting the league title, mate. And mm. has he got... Uh, it's not so much just him, mate. As as he and his staff... And my issue is the staff, mate, with him more than anything at the moment. I just don't think they're experienced enough to deal with what these players, these modern players need. I really don't think... We haven't got an out-and-out -out coach at this football team. Fletcher and Carrick, love them both. They're not fully qualified coaches at the top level, which United are. If we want to be sitting at the table of the Pep Guardiola's and Jurgen Klopp's, then just look at their teams that they have around them. Look what Ferguson did with his teams around him, with him changing his number twos all the time. Can Ali do that? He doesn't imply anyone who's got more experience than him, ever. And we all know that Ollie's not got the most experience himself. So, uh, is is there going to be anyone there to challenge Ollie on that training ground and say, Ollie, look, maybe we should look at this? There's not one man on that training ground. McKenna, defensive coach, behave. You know what I mean, Carrick, love you, but go away, earn your badge, do your badges, go and do a coaching role somewhere else, do a, a Gerard, a Rooney, do you know what I mean? A Lampard, go do that. No, I'm sick of people being given the chance to learn at Manchester United. It's like, I, mean, I had Noreen on my channel, Noreen on my channel before, it's like jobs for mates. That's what mm. he called it, jobs for mates. Exactly. Actually, you know what, mate, coaching staff on at United will change an awful lot. It really will, because we've got players there, but you look at Rashford, you get a good coach or, or older Rashford, then you're talking a different player altogether. You really are. Mm. And like you said, what style of play have we got? What system have we got? Has anything really changed apart from good signings? Because without Bruno, mate, yeah, we're true. down with Arsenal this season. It's as simple as that. And he can't keep doing it. If he gets injured, mate, season over. It is that simple. We are not making top four if Bruno gets injured. It's done. Mm. Absolutely, man. Um, got a super chat if I believe visual tracks for super chat, mate. Title says it all can't afford more truck drop points. Drop dead Rashford. Wow, Rashford's oh. getting the goals, man. I don't know where we'd be with you know. What I mean, I don't know, <laughs> it's crazy, man. Uh, I said this before, he's just better than Daniel James. Give him as much time, I don't have the same numbers. Is that true? Stat man is, I don't know, oh, believe no. visuals. He's got a big yes, agenda we... against Rashford. We see, but, we yeah. saw Dan James last year when he went like 30 games without a goal or something. He's not getting the same numbers. He's shown it already. Like, as yeah. much as people haven't, like, people... But he has a biggest agenda, Rashford. though. I believe Israel's... Wow. Like, mm. if you're saying for Dan James, I mean, you can clearly tell that's an agenda. Yeah, he has no IQ. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's, I don't know if this yeah. is the time for the Rashford, you know, slander. When, you know what I mean? He's got two goals yesterday. Maybe you could talk about his um, performances not being up to scratch. I still think, you know, he's, he's not got, you know, he's, he's got the goals in, but had the performance back to goals, I'm not sure. But, He's getting the goals and I can't knock him down. Um, got another super chat here from uh, Lebong. He says, "Ask a real question. Do you think Oli had the backing of Pep? Would he be better because Pep bought Delilo and sold him? Is it on on Oli? I'll start with you and start with that one. Is it on on Oli? Do, do I think Oli's got backed in the summer? The answer is no. I didn't think he got backed in the summer. But do I think if he had the backing that Pep Guardiola did, would he win the league? And the answer is no. He's shown it. Just look at his credentials. He hasn't really done anything major in football." And the thing is, that just look at his signings. He signed Harry Maguire at 80 million pounds. His first season, whether yeah. people like it or not, he got backed. Was Harry Maguire a good signing with all that money spent? No. 
Juan Misaka, fifty million pound. The way we, we the way we want to play progressive football. Him attacking is it the best of signing? And I like Juan Misaka, but the answer is no. I think it's clear. Even if Oli got backed, just look at the plays he's brought in. Are they unbelievable plays in terms of would Pep Guardiola, for example, use them? The answer is no. For Bruno, yeah. But even then, Bruno is yeah. that a really a Pep Guardiola signing? Yeah. In terms of how much uh, Saeed... I see want to keep the ball and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Belevisual comes back again. He goes, No, I don't say it. I made this clear. Score a goal which takes him one minute, but missing for an 89th minute. No, but that's, that's, I think that's that that that, that, level. No, he wasn't missing for 89 that's, minutes, though, was he? Let's be honest. That is just well over yeah. the top. Uh, well Belevisual, so man, he was one of our main outlets yesterday. But the thing is, yeah, yeah. his finishing was shocking. I think he missed two big chances yesterday. Mm, that was the problem. Did. Yeah. But he's, he's getting the goals, and right now I said it. I, I said for me, we've got to hide the performances when the team really isn't being coached well enough to kind of you know mask all that. Listen, we've got these kind of problems. I think Newcastle and Keck's probably wondering, bloody hell, scoring all these goals, what's going on? Why are we having this <laughs> Rashford event? You know, it's crazy. What do you what do you make of Rashford just before we move on to like maybe combine eleven? We'll give you a cheeky point by eleven. But yeah, go on. It's just as I said before, just inconsistency really. Like he's he's got the quality. You can say it. He just goes through spells that like he had one like a month or so yeah. ago, pretty much just after the, the 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 food thing with the the government. Like once that came about, it was like he went onto a new level. He was like he was trying to be some Avengers superhero or something, like doing it for the country, doing it for Man United. He was doing everything. He was scoring goals for fun, but then he goes through droughts. He goes through a few games where he, he can't buy a goal. But he's got the quality. He's got the pace. When he's on form, he's great. He's an England international, so and he's a, a local lad. He's a diehard Man United fan, so mm-hmm. I need to stick with him. Like when he's on form, he's unplayable. He's an outstanding player and a, a, a big credit to your club. So yeah, I, I like Rashford. He's a good player. Wait, someone yeah. said these um, signings want Ed Woodward. Yeah, Ed Woodward is a br- like he's a businessman. It makes no sense for a businessman to sign Dan James because he won't sell shirts. Mm-hmm. He's not a commercial asset like that. These, that first summer, I think those were Oli's signings. I don't think anyone can deny that. Mm, yeah, that yeah, summer, no, I Donny van der Beek, yeah. that was an Oli signing. Yeah. Definitely, mate. Definitely. Absolutely. I agree with that. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're going to do a combined level because I feel like, you know, this. I know most of the team might be United, but we'll try and <laughs> see if we can fit, you know, some kind of plays, you know. But uh, let's go for keeper. Um, has your keeper been doing well, Darlo, or who, who's been in there? Mate, either one of them, to be fair. Like, yeah, Darlow's they're... been our keeper all season, uh, but Dubravka has been keeping us pretty much in the Premier League for the last two seasons prior. Like, if you said to me at the end of last season that would be entering this season, would be up into nearly March without Dubravka, with Darlow starting every game, I'd be like, have a day off. Like, might as well relegate us now if we haven't got Dubravka all season, but... Darlow has stepped up to the plate and he's been absolutely phenomenal. There's been calls for England and all sorts. And we're 17th in the league. We're on the brink of relegation, but Darlow like, has been keeping us in games without him in, in goal and Wilson up top. We, we'd probably be 19th. We'd be knackered without the mm. pair of them. So either or Dubravka or Darlow, I think there's talks about Dubravka coming back now because he's been back. He's been on the bench for the last four or mm. five games. And is crucial to us, but so I think fans are now wanting to start to see Dubravka come back, although Darlow hasn't warranted being dropped. So Bruce is in a little bit of a dilemma here. So it's it's quite a nice one to have having two keepers that you trust in. So either one, I'm not really that bothered. All right, I think, fair both, think both think both clubs are in the same situation in that department. Yeah, uh, I think <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Belay Visual says, I'm not talking about just one game, but you can't keep blaming Oli. I fall it back to Oli, but now it's time to bounce. Well, you know what I mean? That's it, mate. You know what I mean? We are, you know, it's a big, big question. Oli in or Oli out? That's a big question at the minute. Um, shall we give them Darlow? Or shall we give it in them? You know what I mean? De Gea's not been... Think, just thinking of it, that's probably like the only player they're actually going to get. So you might as well... <laughs> little, yeah. I was going to say, let me have one. Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah start, start, start as you don't mean to carry on. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he has been... He, ha- right he, ha- that- he has been decent, no. He has been decent. you got to give the guy credit. Keeper has been good. Both, like I said, both of yeah. them, but Darlow, man, you wouldn't have expected it, but he has he's, uh, stood his ground, hasn't he? And he's, yeah. he's earned his spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. 
Uh, right back, uh, Wabisako ahead of you know yeah. yeah Emil Croft yeah no worries um, yeah <laughs> center back center back options what who's anyone been a form for you guys because we, uh, we to be fair like you know yeah you we've know, got a backs. handful of good center backs but we're having a lot of injury problems they've been in and out of the team a lot lately uh, I think our best most two consistent players which might even surprise you will be Federico Fernandez and Kieran Clark like we love mm. them uh, Fabian Shaw's been inconsistent and injury prone. Although def- uh, before his injury that he got against Southampton, he was on a run of about a month of good form. Like back in the 2018 season, he was our player of the year. Since then, we hadn't really seen any of that. He was a shadow of the man once Rafa Benitez left, mm. but he was just starting to pick that form up again, and he's out for the next eight weeks. So yeah, yeah we've got Shaw, Lascelles, Fernandez, mm. and Clark. Would you put them ahead of Maguire and uh, Bailly? Would you ha- would you put them ahead of? Oh, I don't know. That's yeah. a tough one. Yeah, uh, maybe one of them over the other. I'm not too sure. Uh, yeah, I think we'll do that. I think we'll do that. We'll have we'll have uh, yeah, Bailly. Bailly Clark. Yeah, we'll go. Bailly, Bailly, I was going to go Bailly Clark. Just yeah, I, yeah, I go with that. I like Bailly because he's just no nonsense. He's a proper old school, yeah. just solid centre yeah. back. Just smashes you out yeah. the way like no bullshit. Mm. Well, you know when, you, when uh, you're talking about Federico Fernandez, is he fit for the Because mm-hmm. I think he was out for the Chelsea. No, he's not. No, he's out. Yeah, mm. yeah cool. Right then. Left back, we'll have Shaw all day long. Yes. I'm not even going to go there. Uh, <laughs> midfield, midfield, we'll have... Um, oh, we'll Fred have, um, Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> Fred McTominay Bruno. We'll have that midfield there. Up front, we'll have... Because Callum Wilson's out, isn't he? Yeah. We'll have Rashford on the left. You got anyone? Anyone on the right? All right, so back from yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll, have, um, we'll have who will have up front. Uh, Rush. I mean, you can't be playing Saint Maximin then. And this is another token gesture for me. <laughs> so we, we, we need token uh, gestures. We're going to get relegated. So we'll put, uh, we'll put, we'll put, we'll put the problem we've got Greenwood. in Greenwood on the yeah, right. in the league. We're not scoring many goals, are we? Forward, so it's hard to pick them. But yeah. I think I think our forwards are definitely better. I, I would go. I would go Rashford left, Greenwood right, and then yeah. Jesus, mid I one think, in the I middle, so, isn't it? I think Wilson would probably do well up front for you, but yeah, you know, he, he would do. He's out at the minute. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Maximum's right. all we've got to offer, unfortunately. Yeah, um, yeah. We'll just put anyone in there. You know what I mean? Anyone can go in there. Give me your team um, for the for the game against um, United. What would be your team going against my United, Keg? Uh, with injuries, it's pretty straightforward, providing we stick with the 4-3-3 that we've been playing. If we do decide to go five at the back, it'll be a different story. So in goal, uh, it'll be Darlo for another week at least until uh, Dubravka might come back. Uh, Emil Kraft right back, Jamal Lewis left back with uh, Jamal Lascelles and Kieran Clark centre back. Uh, if we do go five at the back, either Isaac Hayden or Paul Dummett will probably slide into the back line, but hopefully not. Hopefully we do play the 4-3-3 and we'll go for you. Uh, so Isaac Hayden will be in centre mid with John Joe Shelby and Joe Willock with mm. Sir Maximin on the left, uh, Miggy Almiron as a false nine. And with Wilson being out, the right-hand side's a tricky one. Personally, I would prefer to say Ryan Fraser, although Steve Bruce might go with either Dwight Gale or Joe Linton. Mm. Fair play, fair play. Um, that's a good team. Um, Adam, what are you going for? Your one to eleven. Henderson, Henderson, Wambazaka, Luke Shaw, Maguire, Baye. Uh, uh, I don't know if you guys seen the picture of Donny Van der Beek actually playing on the training oh. grounds the day that United flew out the other day. So I'm wow. just have a sneaky feeling uh, he may not be as injured as first thought. So I'm going to put Donny van der Beek uh, in next to McTominay because I know that low block's coming and I just want something more in midfield. So that's my little change-up. Obviously, Bruno, yeah. then it all depends if Cavani's fit. It would be Cavani with Greenwood and Rashford either side of him. If Cavani isn't fit, obviously Martial comes straight in there. No problem at all. I think that's, that's the sort of team we're going to need. We're going to need a little bit extra. You know what? There is a shout for one matter coming in. Possibly for the low block. Mm. Uh, I know he played, I think this was the last time he started the Premier League game at Newcastle as well. 
uh, previous fixture. Uh, so, yes, there is a shout for him there, but I feel like Greenwood is looking after the ball well at the moment. I think he deserves a shot in the team. He ain't going to drop Rashford. And if Cavani's fit, he plays. So, I think I'm being realistic with throwing my little Donny Swerve ball in there, mate. Mm. All right, big up, big up. Um, and um, that man, give me your team, mate. Listen, I'm just going to go with Oli's team because, listen, whatever team I'm going to say is never going to happen. The Herring goal, Wan Bissaka, Lindelof, Maguire, Luke Shaw, Fred McTomney, McTomney's fit, Greenwood, Bruno, Rashford, and I think Martial will start up front because he was on the bench against Real Sociedad. And it'll be silly to, to start Cavani with his injury record and stuff. Like, there's no mm. point rushing him back. Mm. Absolutely. I'm going to go for De Gea, Juan Misaka, Bailly, Maguire, Shaw. I'm going to go for Matic, Fred, Bruno. Um, I'm going to go for Rashford, Greenwood and Martial. Matic Predictions I'm going to go for. Matic yeah. and Fred give me nightmares. Yeah, but <laughs> nightmares. I, like I think that McTominay looked like he had a bit of a muscle injury, so I'm going to Give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, I'm going to go for two Lil Man United. Keg, what are you going for? As much as I'd like to be positive and give Newcastle a win, I think the best we can hope for is a draw, maybe a 1-1. But realistically, in my head, I'm probably going to go for a 2-1 Man United. Yeah, fair play. Um, Adam, what are you going for? Uh, I'm just going to go 3-0 United. I just think yeah. we will get that early goal. I think, and then Newcastle, I think, will fall apart. I do. Yeah. Statman, what are you going for? I'm going with 2 as well. Hey, just touching on last week as well. Last week, we were better on. Yeah. It was a draw. We will predict the wins. Yeah, no, so, now that we're all in the relegation <laughs> zone in the table, yeah. mate, aren't we so far? So, in the, like, <laughs> the little predictor league that we have, we're all on zero points right now. <laughs> crazy, crazy. <laughs> oh man. But um yeah, man, it's been a pleasure. That's been your match preview, guys. Keg man, thanks for coming on. Where can the people find you, mate? Uh just on the Magpie channel, me personally, my Instagram and Twitter's right there, Keg TMC. But if you can follow us at the Magpie channel on Twitter, Instagram, yeah. and subscribe on YouTube as well, that'd be appreciated. Yeah, man, big up, man. You guys are doing well on your channel, man. Shout out to uh, Matty as well. He's in Dubai now, man. He's chilling in Dubai now, isn't he? Fan yeah, out, traitor. Lucky man, isn't he? <laughs> know, man. Lucky no one man. likes people in Dubai right now. Exactly, no. man, exactly. <laughs> he went at the wrong time, didn't he? <laughs> I know, man. And I can't come I back, know. he's fucked. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 he has a quarantine, doesn't he? He has to go in that little hotel, doesn't he? When he comes back. Uh, he's meant yeah. to, yeah, but like with the government rules coming up, I'm meant to be changing it on the fifteenth or something. I don't know if he's going to get away yeah. with it because he hasn't started work yet. He's out there for, he's probably going to be out there for another month. So maybe if Boris is kind, he might change it up by the time he has to come yeah, back. Man. So you Hopefully. might, you might catch on, lucky. Yeah, exactly. Big up, man. And um, of course, Adam, mate, uh, let us know when he can find you, pal. Yeah, catch me, Mad Red United on YouTube, Adam Matic on Twitter. Uh, all my socials are on my main page of uh, my YouTube channel as well. There, catch me there, guys. Yeah, man, big up to yourself and Statman. You know, for the Nagasman prop, let it know, man. <laughs> Listen, just Statman Baines on Insta and Twitter. Simple as that. Big up, man, big up, man. Guys, it's been a pleasure. Like the video, subscribe to United Central, and we'll be back on Sunday evening, 7 o'clock, man. Bloody hell, man. <laughs> Where has the time gone, mate? We are back in the Europa League, guys, 7 o'clock. You know what I mean? It gets low block, and we'll probably have to just, you know, you know, Bruno Fernandes and Rashford, you know what I mean? Take United back to where we get a 2-0 win. But, guys, like the video, subscribe to United Central, and we'll be back soon, guys. Take care.